What is up YouTube and welcome to this post credit scene breakdown and speculation. So for me, this movie was possibly the most exciting Marvel movie in a very, very long time, having watched it. And with the exception from Far From Home, it might be my favourite non-team-up MCU movie in a phase or two. And it actually has exciting post-credits which bled into the ending of the movie. Now, the movie was very, very good, like I said, and I did not expect to enjoy it this much. I wasn't really that hyped for it. And Eternals I'm not that hyped for, but I am because the director is amazing. But here, this movie was just brilliant. And from word of mouth, it's going to do so well. And, well, I'll save my full thoughts for a proper breakdown. I might do a breakdown on the villain of the piece. You know, that proper villain with the twist. And I will also do one on my top 10 Easter eggs in the movie. Now, at the end of the movie, we saw Shung and Katie recite the events of the movie to their former friend and their partner, which is a payoff from the earlier scene where they are told that they need to do more with their life and not just be valets. And, well, they did. They took that advice and helped the Great Protector and Shung's mother's village stop the darkness. But they're back and, well, they're chilling out until our boy Wong has turned up. Now, Wong seems to be a big player moving forward in the MCU because he had a bit part here. I wasn't expecting him to turn up again after his fight with Abomination, but he did. And he's clearly working with Bruce and Carol, and we seem to be having some new status quo. And he also pops up, of course, in the trailer for Spider-Man No Way Home. Now, he must have been done winding down with Abomination and is back at Kamataj. However, he returns here to find Shang-Chi as he not only stopped the evil, but the important part here is that he was able to take control of the Ten Rings, which are incredibly old. They are incredibly old in the comics as well. This is essentially him being initiated into the superhero community and more than likely the Avengers. Of course, after Civil War and as of Infinity War, the Avengers were still disavowed. And, well, all the heroes did start to work together during the blip years. I think we are moving toward the era where pretty much everyone was an Avenger. It's not going to be a just a specific, real curated team like we did with the original Avengers Initiative. But we could have rolling rosters. We had, of course, the Secret Avengers, the New Avengers, all of that. And Shang-Chi did, of course, join the Avengers in the comics. So this is him here being added to the roster. And as Wong said, all of your life is going to change forever. And I'm really excited to see where that goes. Now here, when we have them go through the portal there, the rings are being investigated by Bruce, Wong and Carol Danvers, which was so very, very cool to see her. And she is a huge character. It seems to me that they are really grooming her for that role of being the leader of the Avengers, which I really, really want. I don't like the idea of her just operating off-world. I'd rather her be here and be an Avenger and really live up to what Nick Fury wanted her to be. However, these rings have awoken something. And, well, yes, this apparent awakening is a big thing and the key to understanding this is a throwaway line at the start of the movie in the prologue we learn of the origin of the ten rings kind of as shang chi's father is said to have stolen them from a temple or found them somewhere in a meteor but the actual explanation is that they are from off world 
The rings were actually found by the Mandarin in China's Valley of the Spirits. The Ten Rings, known in the comics as the Ten Rings of Power, are actually the product of a dragon-like race called the Axon Karl Macluans from the planet Maklu. The Axon Kar utilized them mainly as a power source for their great spaceships. And, well, we did have one of these land on Earth, which was, of course, found by the Mandarin. He got the Ten Rings, and, well, the rest of the movie happened. However, I did find it weird that we didn't actually get to see the, you know, the where they came from. Usually, of course, these things are, you know, a big thing. But, of course, much like the Tesseract, the Stones... Over time, with the ether, they would then soon be introduced as the Infinity Stones. So, of course, here we are going to have these Ten Rings be introduced to the world, and then their history and what they actually are will fully be revealed. Now, of course, Carol hasn't heard of these, and interestingly, the pilot in human form would guide the Mandarin to find these, and, well, Fin Fang Foom in the comics wasn't actually in this movie, obviously due to incredibly problematic things. And I do wonder if the Great Protector was a substitute or if we will actually see a version of that character be introduced as a McLuhan. So if I had to bet, yes, I think that we could see this dragon be awoken and head to Earth, considering how much Shang-Chi has almost pretty much created its own story and mythology in this movie due to the problematic history of adapting the comics. Of course, yeah, there are people saying that it could be Galactus, but personally, I think he will be teased in the end of the Eternals. And considering the Ten Rings were not acknowledged at all, then this makes more sense they are calling out to their former home. And of course, the best bit was, you know, the karaoke scene with Wong, of course. Now, the second post credit scene was a really odd one, one which I didn't really care for. As we see Shang-Chi's sister take over the Ten Rings after being ostracized by her father and made her own dark web fight club. Now, with her father finished, she would now become the leader, which seems odd due to her having a lot of growth in the movie. And I feel like the idea of her growing into herself and really kind of not limiting herself by her gender, which I thought she'd become a force for good, now, it does seem like she is, you know, kind of becoming a criminal mastermind. And I wonder if that will be putting her at odds with her brother. And I'm not really sure where this scene is going to go next exactly. I think it's more of a culmination of a storyline in the movie as opposed to of it setting up anything explicitly for the future. It's as weird as it seems to be like when you take over a safe house and a mission in a game as your team is put in charge and your logo is added. The kind of girl boss addition of the women at the end was, yeah, it was a bit on the nose. But she is a composite of Shang-Chi's sisters and half-sisters like Esme, so I'm not sure whether this will go next, but I do think that the origin of the Ten Rings is possibly where we will go next with the story of Shang-Chi. And I'm very excited because the movie was really, really good. Now, tomorrow I will have a video out on just the origins of where did those dark beasts come from and what is coming up next. But that is it for this video. So please drop a like down below if you enjoyed it. Do subscribe with notifications on if you want more. And I'll see you soon and goodbye.